everybody. This is Chris, and we are back on Shed Talk. I had a little quick difficulty trying to get on. That's why I'm a minute or so late, but I think we've got everything fixed. So we'll, uh, we'll find out, won't we? So where have I been? It's, that's a pretty good question. Where have I been? For those of you who watched my first Shed Talk, that was back in January, and at that time I had made the statement that, hey, guess what, I'm going to be doing Shed Talk, and I was going to try to make this a uh, weekly thing, and I was totally excited about it and, and getting it going, and then all of a sudden, boom, I'm gone. What happened? So I'll tell you what happened. Weather happened. Um, yes, weather. So as I've mentioned, and as you can see, I'm in my shed. This is not a studio set. This is actually my shed. Uh, this is actually a shed full of, as you can see, garden equipment. Tools are in front of me. Um, and as you can see on the wall behind me, no insulation. So when the polar vortex comes through and I have temperatures that are in the teens and the single digits with wind chills and minus whatever, yeah, you figure that out. Are you going to come and join me in the shed in those temperatures? I don't think so. So I really didn't think my little heater that I have running right now was going to cut it. Uh, so there went shed talk until now because the temperatures have gotten better and I have been back out in the shed the last few days and I have the heater going and I figured it's time to get this uh, back on track. And the topic that I picked, uh, you know, about resolutions, I, I think was uh, apropos to, um, you know, what had happened with me kind of disappearing and then reappearing. Uh, so uh, that's kind of what I was looking at for us to talk about. Now, if uh, any of you who are watching have any other topics you want to discuss, any questions you want to ask, uh, just feel free and let me know. So we will uh, definitely talk about that. The purpose here of Shed Talk was just uh, so that we could spend a little time in the shed and uh, informally chit-chatting about uh, life and how to get through the daily life and, you know, kind of see what's going on. Uh, as I had mentioned uh, before, uh, the shed is the place where I come out and have a uh, little time away from the norm. Uh, a little time to think, a little time to uh, write some stuff down, and uh, it's actually quite cozy. So I've got my uh, soda over here. Oh, there it is in camera. Got my soda, and I've got my little tray table. I've got my heater, as I mentioned. And uh, what else could I ask for? You know. So this is why we're in the shed. So I thought it'd be a good time to talk. All right. So, like I say, if you want to bring up any comments, feel free. But I thought we would talk about resolutions because, well, it's about that time of the year when many of us have realized that we made resolutions, we were honestly all set to go with our resolutions, and we probably tried our resolutions, whatever it may be. You know, I guess the common ones are, uh, you know, dieting and fitness and getting healthier and going to the gym, taking walks, bike riding, you name it. Um, those are the more popular ones. And then, you know, other people have ones where, uh, you know, they just kind of think about was well, what I could do to improve my life or change my life or, you know, any of those things. So many had great intentions, many had decided, yep, I'm going to do it this year. Because you know, and you know that you know, don't tell me that you don't know. You know that in the past, you've done the exact same thing. Yes, you have made resolutions in the past, and guess what? Then happened, did it? Nope. That's why I don't make resolutions. We'll get to that in a second. 
So I figured we would talk a bit about, you know, well, why do our resolutions kind of go by the wayside uh, by about February or so? Uh, for those of you who are still doing your resolutions, well, I will say with my soda, cheers to you. Uh, give it another week or so and we'll see what happens. But the issue with making the resolutions I see it as twofold, as the biggest problems with the resolutions. One, we're kind of forced to make the resolution. You know, it's the best time to do it. I mean, I'm not saying forced in a negative way. I'm just saying, you know, the end of one year and the beginning of another year, well, that's probably the best time to make a resolution. You know, we're ending the old, we're coming up with the new. So, hey, make a resolution. Why not? Makes sense. But we're kind of forced because we might not be ready. We might not have wanted it. We might not have thought of a resolution. Um, but all of a sudden, that time of the year comes in, and what is everybody saying right after Christmas? They're all sitting there saying, hey, did you make a resolution? What's your resolution? So you're kind of forced into doing a resolution. And the other thing that I really think ends up going wrong with the resolution How resolved are we in doing that resolution? Seriously. See, you might tell yourself, yeah, is it ready to do it? No problem. But are you really? Are you honestly willing and ready to make that commitment? See, and that goes back to my first comment. We're not ready to make these resolutions. We're forced into it just by the time of the year and by peer pressure. And, you know, peer pressure could work. I'm not saying peer pressure doesn't work, but it's peer pressure long acting. See, most of my career in counseling, I've been helping people who were suffering from addictions, uh, typically drugs, alcohol. And I came to learn over the years that it didn't really matter the motive of why they got into treatment. You know, I was always under the impression that, you know, treatment is not going to work unless you have the right motive. So if you're going to go into treatment, then you're going in saying, I have a problem and I need help. But see, many people didn't enter treatment for those reasons. A good number of people enter treatment because they were forced into treatment. So you had a lot of people coming into treatment saying, I really don't have a problem, but my spouse didn't have a problem. And if I didn't come into treatment, well, my spouse was leaving me. Or my boss told me if I don't stop doing what I'm doing, even though I know it's not a problem, then he's going to fire me. So here I am. Um, or for those of you who have drug courts, uh, the judge gave them the choice. Would you like a prison cell or would you like a treatment bed? Well, that's a no-brainer. Um, I'm taking the treatment bed over the prison cell. So they show up to treatment and say, I don't have a problem. I just didn't want that prison cell. And I always figured that that was never going to work. And honestly, in some cases, it didn't. But in a lot of cases, it did. And why did that work? Because one of the things that I would ask people to do who were coming in for the wrong reasons, or at least what I thought were the wrong reasons, because I would say to them, look, while you're here, you're going to be here for a month. And while you're here, I want you to pretend that you are going to be the model client in this facility. You are going to be the best client we've ever, 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 ever had. And every day you're going to be up on time. You're going to interact with people. You're going to go to the lectures. You're going to raise your hand and ask a question at the lectures. When we come to group, you're going to interact in group. And when you have to meet with the counselor, well, you're going to show up. Now, whether you're going to talk to your counselor or not, not my problem. That's your counselor's problem, but you're showing up. Kind of goes into the phrase, fake it till you make it. Because you see... When they started doing that every single day, changing their behavior every single day, at about a month's time, that new behavior became their behavior. That new behavior became ingrained in them. And they actually started to like that new behavior. They actually started to like how they were feeling without the drugs or the alcohol. 
they actually came to the realization that, well, maybe I didn't have a problem, but I definitely needed to stop doing what I was doing. And so it started to work. Now, the only way that that would last past those 30 days was if on a daily basis they kept doing that, and they kept doing that on a daily basis with help, not doing this on their own. Because for those who try to do this on their own, well, it rarely, if ever, worked. So let's take this back to our resolution. So come to the end of December and everybody's bugging us, what's your resolution? What are you doing You know, different at the beginning of this year? What's your goals? All that good stuff. So what happens is we come up with something and, you know, say one of the first things that enters my mind, you know, like, well, I'm going to go to the gym. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get healthy. I'm going to eat better. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to work out, get my routine down, and, uh, you know, I'm going to lose weight and get some muscle mass. It could be awesome. And you tell yourself this is what you need to do. Now, you know, maybe this is what you need to do. But then here's the point. Are you ready at the end of December to make a commitment that at least three days a week, if not more, but at least three days a week, you are going to find the time to go out to that gym, put in a serious workout, go back home, eat healthy, get a good night's rest, repeat. Now, if you are, and if you can maintain that for a good, well, maybe couple months, because you're not doing it daily, you're probably on a pretty good track. Which is why I'm doing this in mid-February, not the end of February or beginning of March. Because I'll say, <clears throat> excuse me, if you are doing your resolution faithfully, seriously, um, and it comes, you know, the end of February, beginning of March, and you're still doing it, well, odds are you're going to keep doing it. Because regardless of why you started, it's now a part of you. And you're stuck. You're going to keep doing it. So that's a good thing. You're not the one I'm talking to right now. Unless, of course, you're going to slack off and stop doing it in the next week or so. Then you're the one I'm talking to. But more generally, the person I'm talking to right now is more than likely the person who started out strong, did everything they were supposed to in January, and about a week ago or so, it kind of petered out. Or it lasted till maybe a few weeks into January, and then, you know, that, that was it. Now, I know we all have stuff in life, and I've heard this from many of my clients. They come to me for life coaching and say, I need these goals, and I've tried goals before, and the goals don't work. What am I supposed to do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I talk about this stuff. And one of the things that I mention is if you are going to set a goal for yourself and you are going to do a resolution, well, you need a couple things to happen. And these are things I've learned over the years. Again, this is why I don't do resolutions. So if you're going to make a resolution, whatever it is, let's say I'm going to eat healthy. That's my resolution, which is a good thing. See, keep in mind, I'm not knocking or mocking any of these resolutions. I'm trying to help you stick with your resolution because I know that most, well, you're just not doing it anymore. So what do you need to do? Well, I would say you start making your resolutions for what you want to do for your life. Make those resolutions when it's time to make those resolutions. You don't have to make that resolution at the end of December. You don't have to make that resolution in January. You can make that resolution in April, in June, in September. It doesn't matter. When are you determined that enough is enough and I need to make a change in my life? That's when you make the resolution. When you've just had enough, when you're saying, I have gained too much weight, I am now getting ill, the doctor is very concerned. Yeah, it's time. And this might be March, not January, not December. So what are you going to do? Sit there and wait till the end of December to make a change? No. You're going to leave that doctor's office and you're going to make a change so that you can live. That's the beginning of your resolution. See, and the difference is you're ready. At least as ready as you're going to be. Because, again, starting the resolution because the doctor said if you don't do such and such, you may not live long. That may not be the best of motivations because it's not your motivation. 
That's the doctor's motivation. That's the doctor telling you, here's what you need to do or else. See, if I'm saying it to myself, you know, I kind of don't like how I am right now. I'm going to make some changes in my life. Then you're more apt to do it. But I've seen it happen. See, I've seen it happen where people come to that resolution and just stick with it. One of the persons actually is my uh, grandfather on my uh, mother's side. Um, I was younger at, at the time, but uh, both he and my grandmother were very heavy cigarette smokers. Very heavy cigarette smokers. And he went to the doctor, and the doctor had said to him, if you don't stop smoking, you will probably be dead in six months. Now, was that true? I don't know. But what my grandfather heard was, if you don't stop smoking, that's it. He didn't pick up a cigarette again. Now, how he was able to do that so well, I don't know. But I will tell you this. He came back from that doctor's office with a very big bag of hard candies. And every time he had that urge to smoke a cigarette, he threw a hard candy in his mouth, just sucked on the hard candy. That was the rest of his life. We're talking many, many decades left that he always had hard candy in his pocket. There was hard candy in his car, hard candies all over the house. Now, as a grandkid at the time and a younger kid, this was awesome. Because anywhere I went in that house, there was candy. And they weren't hiding there and putting it away because for him, that was his salvation. If his hard candy disappeared, he was going back to the cigarette. So for him, he had this really quick motivation. He stuck with that motivation. And part of the reason that it worked for him, he automatically found a substitute. Now, it may not have been the healthiest of substitutes, but, you know, at this point, that wasn't going to kill him. But he found a substitute. He didn't just stop. If you just stop smoking the cigarette and you don't put in a substitute, well, what are you going to do when you get the craving? Now, why he came up with hard candy, I don't know. I don't know if somebody told him that on the way back or he just came up with that on his own. Doesn't matter. I never saw him without hard candy. But Elsa never saw him with a cigarette ever again. Can't say the same for my grandmother. But that's a different story. So I think with the resolutions, it has to come at a time that we can say, yeah, I got to give this a shot. And yeah, I'm as ready as I'm going to be. I may not be 100% convinced, but this is also coming from me, so I'm going to have to go do this. It's an internal motivation, not an external motivation. And that's going to make all the difference in the world. And with the resolutions, when we make those resolutions, make resolutions which are reasonable. You know, I, I love when, you know, people will say, you know, well, I'm going to go work out at the gym. This is my resolution. I'll work out at the gym like three days a week, and I'm going to get all bulked up. And this is a person who has never, ever seen the inside of a gym. They don't have a clue what's inside that gym. They don't even know how to work anything that's inside that gym. They're just saying, you know what, I'm going to go to the gym because, well, that's the you know, right thing to do, and I'm going to get myself really in shape. So that's what I'm going to head out for. They don't have a clue what they're getting into. How reasonable is this? I don't know. For some people, it could be reasonable. For others, maybe not so much. Now, I'll say that when I started going to the gym, and this wasn't recent, this, I'm talking about the gym like years ago, unfortunately, fortunately, whatever. I didn't have a clue what I was doing in there at first. I didn't know what those machines were, or how to work them, or what to do. I got one of those trainer people who, you know, I just said to them, here, just show me the machines. Like, I don't need training, just like, I don't want to hurt myself on this machine. So... Over time, I got used to it, and I, I stuck to a pretty good routine for a few years, and then other things in life happen, and the same excuses that anyone else can give, you know, got in, in the way, I believe the excuses, and, well, I haven't been in a gym since. But that's what happens. You see, for me to stick with that resolution, I think had to be somewhat reasonable wherein maybe I should have done a little bit extra and gotten that trainer for a while to really show me how to do it and do it properly. Not just show me how to do the machine without hurting myself, but how do you properly work this machine to achieve a goal you're looking for? 
Because there's a lot of reasons to go to a gym, and it's not just to bulk up. And mine wasn't really just to bulk up. I, I just needed to be in better shape. But I just went there and figured I'll lift a few weights, I'll work a few machines, and I'm good to go. There weren't huge results out of that because, again, I didn't really know what I was doing. I wasn't hurting myself, but I wasn't probably helping myself much either. So make sure your resolutions are reasonable. These are things that you know that you can do, and that's very important. Also, when you're looking at the resolutions, it's important to uh, begin to recognize, you know, what is the exact goal? When will I know I've reached that goal? And that's an important piece as well. Because when you look at this and say, well, again, let's use the gym just because I'm using the gym. Honestly, I could use eating healthy, but yeah. I don't know as little as I knew about the gym is, yeah, anyways. Um, but yes, I'm a life coach, everybody. So come talk to me as a life coach. I'm not a nutrition coach. Okay, maybe a resolution I need to make, but I digress. So when you look at the gym and you talk about, you know, this is my resolution, for what? Why are you going to that gym? What is it that you want to accomplish? What is the ultimate goal? Because, you know, maybe the gym isn't the best resource for this. Depending on what you really want your goal to be, unless your goal is actually to walk into a gym, then go for it. But if you really want your goal to be better health, um, you know, maybe feel better, um, you know, maybe have my body look better, whatever your goal is, Start doing some research and start talking to some experts. What is the best thing for me to do to obtain that goal? You know, maybe nutrition and eating better and taking a walk is actually going to have you achieve your goal faster and more efficiently than going to the gym. So don't jump on the means and say, that's my resolution. You need to jump on the goal and say, this is the goal. This is my resolution. It goes back to what I was saying earlier about the uh, uh, inpatient drug clients, you know, coming in for all these different reasons. And, you know, the goal for them really was to get through and finish inpatient treatment. That was the goal. Well, if that's your goal, okay, to spend 30 days in one place and be fed and go to meetings and go to group sessions and see a counselor. Practically anybody could do that for 30 days. That's not the challenge, nor should that be the goal. And that was part of the problem. Their goal was to make it through treatment. What is the real goal? See, the proper real goal in this is, I wanna stop using, I wanna live in recovery. I want a better life. I want to change my life. And one of the ways I can do that is to get into the treatment program and complete the treatment program and then see what they recommend after that. So, again, the goal is not get into treatment. Let's rephrase that goal and say my goal is I want to live a life of recovery. I want to live a life where I'm not using that substance anymore. What do I need to do to get that goal? It might be inpatient treatment. It might not be inpatient treatment. But again, talk to an expert to find out what is the best way for me to achieve that goal. So I think, you know, number one is we're saying to not necessarily be pressured into making your resolution when people say you need to make your resolution. And this next uh, piece being really identify your goal. That's your resolution. That's what you're trying to achieve. And the third thing is, make sure it's reasonable. So if you've got this reasonable goal, and it's something that you really want to do, and you're looking at this as a goal, not as the means to the goal, you're more apt to make this work. I think the last piece, which is very important in this, is not to do it alone. And that's what really works with the uh, clients that I saw when they finished inpatient treatment. 
you know, as I say, after 30 days, it became a part of them. You know, this was their habit. This is what they did. But to sustain that, once you left that environment, how do I sustain that? One of the best ways to do that, help. So, you know, they have family members who help them, and some go to AA or NA or multitude of other, you know, self-help type groups or online, you know, groups. But the point is they're not doing it alone. So when you're trying to work your resolution, this isn't something that you need to do alone. Find a group. You know, use some of the apps, you know, from your phone. Use, uh, you know, meetup type websites. Find where there's groups that are doing some of these activities that you yourself want to do. And get hooked up in those groups. You're more apt to do something if you've got somebody helping you out and pushing you through. And you've got a commitment to not only yourself, but to someone else. That's going to help. You know, if, if you really are going to the gym and that's something, you know, that you feel you need to do and is best for you, awesome, go for it. Bring a friend or hook up with some friends who are there and, you know, try to make sure you guys are working out together. That's going to help. So don't do it alone. So I appreciate uh, everybody who has uh, signed in and is watching this. Um, if, you know, you have topics that you want me to cover on Shed Talk, I, I am, again, looking to do this regularly, you know, assuming we're not going to have another polar vortex come in and freeze me out. Let me know, you know, send me a message, post something on uh, uh, Facebook somewhere or my other social medias and let me know what you, uh, what topics you'd be looking for and, you know, what you would want to hear from me. I'm going to try to do this once a week. We'll uh, see how that goes. And um, I guess we could say that's a resolution. You know, even though I said I don't make resolutions, but let's call this a resolution and, and see where it goes. So if I'm going to follow my own advice, then one of the things we're going to need to do to make this resolution work is I'm going to need people to help me. So for all of you who, you know, are listening to this, you know, encourage me and give me a hand here that, uh, you know, remind me we got to do a Shed Talk or we haven't heard one or, hey, I'd love to talk about this on Shed Talk. You know, that, that'd be awesome. Um, so your feedback is important on that. And let your friends know about this. I uh, will be reposting the rebroadcast of this on uh, my social media sites, my website, my YouTube channel. So uh, if you missed it or your friends missed it, uh, encourage them to catch it live when they can make comments. And uh, in the meantime, do the second best at least and uh, listen to it or watch it elsewhere online. Again, thank you everybody who signed up and who listened in. And that is it for tonight's Shed Talk. And I hopefully will uh, run into you next week uh, here in the Shed. Take care. Mindful day.